story I'll tell you a, a quick before we end, inshallah, and environment and this environment is really important. Uh, there was a Somali brother that was driving me once to a class, and he said uh, he told me that uh, his friends were drug dealers, mm. and uh, what he'd do is he realized he wanted to help them, so they play football, uh, and he would purposely choose the football time, the timings for it that would go with Maghrib Salah. So the drug dealers that were Muslim, they just started to pray Salah because it was there. They eventually started to pray Salah five times a day mm. and then they ended up leaving the drugs Allah mm. Allah. because of one simple thing. And mm. I was thinking, this guy, you're a genius. Mm. That is what you call ge That's like someone who says, look, I, I'm not, I, I haven't got the world in my hands. Yeah. But mm. I know if I just do a small little thing here, yeah. cheeky little thing, yeah. it might lead to something great. And this is why in Islam we have this wonderful concept that Allah loves those deeds that are done most regularly. Mm. Small and consistent, right? yeah. And, and in terms of our growth, like you know, people watching, they might be in a position where they know they want to get there, but they're right here right now. Yeah. And so they're like, how on earth am I ever going to get they there? They feel like they have to yeah. make huge, massive yeah. steps to So what do they do? There. What do they do? They take their belief and they lower it. Or their achievement. Yeah. And they go, instead of me getting there, yeah. like, I'm going to go there. here. Yeah. Right? And I'm saying, you don't need to do that. Mm -mm. What you need to do is you need to raise even higher. Yeah. And then you need to believe that you can do it and you need to go and find a way to do it. Right. Because anything, this is the beauty of the world now, anything you want to find out, you're one click away. You're someone who smokes, you want to quit smoking? How to quit smoking, <laughs> right? You're someone who wants to uh, be great at public speaking? How to be great at public speaking? Mm. Like any topic anyone needs to do, you go, you watch TED Talks, which are good quality, you go onto YouTube, you watch podcasts, like you can master any area of your life in terms of content. And then the second part is going out there and doing it. Yeah, like I, if I, I started managing people like all those years ago, if I didn't continue to manage people, it wouldn't be great. Yeah. Right. So you need to go and do the action. So one is you need to get your mind right about the level that you can achieve, then do the action and then be consistent in it. Because when you work in Muslim organizations, there's all kinds of issues that happen. People have this utopic kind of yeah. mindset about Muslim organization. I'm going to go into the Muslim uh, organization. All the brothers are going to be friendly with each other. Yeah, Asalaamu Alaikum yeah, brother, yeah, Asalaamu Alaikum sister. And everything's fine. <laughs> but when they get there, there's backstabbing, there's politics, yeah. there's all this. And then they're like, yeah. you know what? I can't work here. I'm not going to work yeah. here anymore. Yeah, yeah. It's like, no, this is the part of it. This is the real test of it, exactly. right? So you just got to continue, continue, continue. Like you imagine if I had stopped speaking at Al Maghri when I first started, my life would yeah, be completely exactly. against communication, have... right? So we don't let these fears stop us. Mm. When fear happens, you go and there you hit a, it on the head. A, it, Subhanallah, yeah. there's a quote on this, uh, a grammarian, I can't remember, one of the greatest grammarians to have existed in Arabic. Uh, he, he wanted to Sibway. master, I think, no, I, th I think no. it wasn't in Mosul Wave, I'm okay. wrong. It's a book on value of time uh, by Sheikh Abdul Fatih Ali Ghudda, it talks about this. And he, this man wanted to learn about grammar. So he spent 70,000 dirhams, I don't know how much that is now. Oh just to acquire it and he That's became a, a master right? <laughs> yeah. he became a master right? so he said yeah. look I've got a goal and he, and he used his money to, to master something he spent it in the way of Allah to learn it and he became he eventually became and he was someone who wasn't very good he said at the start of it he was just quoting it he said I wasn't very good at it it's a bit like how you're saying it. I wasn't mm. very good at it but I persisted and I yeah. spent mm. and I tried yeah. to learn it and I became a master because right? why persistence overcomes resistance mm. it doesn't matter what resistance you face yeah. Yeah. as long as you keep going you keep doing you keep getting the knowledge you learn from your mistakes it's and fine. you think that's, that's the beauty uh, in, in all of it Because you could have been somebody that from the beginning you were a great public speaker yeah. And you could have done lots of 15 years of public speaking And in the end you still may not have been able to mentor somebody on public mm. speaking Because yeah. the beauty exactly. of it was in the challenge of you yes. persisting yeah. And then being able to come out and be like wow this is everything I learned yes. Now I know how to master it yeah. Rather than being somebody who's already so good at it yeah. Because you wouldn't realise that this is the way you have to do it, you just take it for granted. Yeah. SubhanAllah, I think that's a beautiful way to end, you know, that aspect of belief. And I hope, I hope you all benefited, inshallah. Inshallah. I, I just want to, I just want to yeah. say one more thing yeah, yeah, sure. for you, right? Um, is this that, you know, uh, when I was growing up, I think I'm probably a little bit older than you guys, right? It's a little bit, yeah. Or <laughs> right, maybe a decade or so. Yeah. <laughs> when I was growing up, like a lot of the guys I saw, um, they were, they were, like good strong guys in the Islamic field who were doing work, yeah. right? Uh, the ISOC guys and all these guys, they were okay, they were just kind of starting out, right? You gotta remember this is a world where there isn't much, uh, there's no like real internet, we used to get happy if we saw like a brown person on TV and, and things like this kind of thing, <laughs> yeah? Like all this kind of stuff, but what I've got to say in the last 10 years, what I've been really, really amazed at is the quality of our youth. Mm. 
the quality of our youth now uh, is amazing, mashallah. And this is something that gets me like really excited because a lot of the guys I've mentored and worked with, like a lot of people will know who they are, right? But the great thing about those guys is that they got me excited because of my regret. So I was like, I had to get to the age of 22, 23 before I started yeah. doing any sort of volunteering, right? Sure. And then it was like, oh my God, I'm so behind, yeah, right? Yeah. And then I saw these guys who were coming into Aira and Al Maghrib when I was starting, you know, these guys were volunteering. They were like 18, 19 years old. And they, and, only had... And, and they had experience already volunteering yeah. and they were, they, were, they were confident, they were yeah. this. And all they needed was me to believe in them more and yeah. raise their standards. Say, no, you think you should be there. No, no, you should be here, right? Yeah. One of the guys I was telling him, I was like, you have to come out with the first. Don't come out with anything except the first. He hadn't even thought about first, mm. right? So for me, like, when I used to see these guys who were 19, 20, 21, I would get so amazed. I'd be like, mm. look at these guys. They're like so young the thing is, you're looking, and they're, they're so doing amazing. That. You're doing that. We're doing that with young people as yeah, well. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but you know what? This is great. Yeah. This is amazing because it gives me hope for the ummah. Like there's a turnaround in yeah. the Ummah, right? Yeah. If you go back 20, Revival. 30 years ago yeah. and you look at youngsters who were like 18, 19, 20, yeah. they didn't know nothing about Islam, never mind like doing anything for Islam, yeah. right? So what I want to say is that it's it's so amazing of what's possible. And you guys know uh, the story already of uh, Umar Adilan when he's in a room and they're like, okay, he goes to everyone, make a wish. Oh, yes, yes, yeah? yes. He's like, make a wish. And yeah. one of the guys like, I wish I had lots of gold. Why? So yeah. I could give for the sake of Allah, right? And another one, he goes, okay, I wish I had gold and pearls so I could give for the sake of Allah and I would give for the kind of stuff. And Umar radiallahu anh said, I wish that this room was filled with people like Abu Ubaidah ibn al-Jarrah. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and Musab ibn Umair. Yeah. Why? Because he valued people over anything, anything else, else. right? And I'm saying like, the reason I'm here is actually for the people that are watching, yeah. for them to realize what they are. Because most of the time, people don't realize what they are. Sahaja. And I'm saying that you as Muslims, you're amazing. And you can achieve amazing things. You have the tools, you have everything you need. You just need to raise your standard, have that vision of yourself getting there. And you can get there because you're in an environment now where there's people like you yeah. who are doing amazing work. And this is the kind of vision that we should be setting for all of us, inshallah.